What was that all about? Yeah, you got a, you know, got a, a little, a little. <laughs> 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 Bubois has given me. He's so annoying. Yeah, so I'm just screaming at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, y'all. If this is Basket News Film Session with Kevin Punter, and we're gonna break down his signature pull-up jumper. But before we start, you know, not to make this uh, film session predictable, <laughs> we had one interesting highlight. Wow. Yeah, let's rewatch it one more time because it might have been a few years since the last time you saw it, probably, right? Yeah, I haven't seen this in a while. What do you remember about that play? Um, obviously, it's, it's around crunch time. My boy Jay Rich gave it to me, and I just, it was kind of like a closeout situation. So I just, yeah, go get a bucket. No know? pull ups yet. No pull ups. Just one yet. on one against Bobby Portis. And yeah. What was that all about? Yeah, you got a, you know, got a, a little, a little, <laughs> yeah. you know, real subtle, real subtle, real subtle. Not too, too much. You can't get a tech at this time. You know, it's, it's close. Can't yeah. get a tech. So yeah, you have to be smart. Got to be smart about it. So that was real subtle. Not too, too much, you know, and just walk away. That's it. And we, of course, some fresh memories with. That's, that's, that was a good one right there, though. This like game. They're just going to have to go for the win, I think, as Punter takes Yabaselli with seven. That's it. This is going to be it right here. Kevin Punter's going to try to break it down. He's from deep. Kevin Punter over the top of Yabaselli. It feels like Nigel Williams Goss was doing good job denying you. Right? He was, he was. He was doing a great job. He yeah. was doing a great job. But I think for him, I think Nigel didn't want to maybe I guess foul. Mm -hmm. And then mind you, he's face guarding me from the time mm. we inbound the ball. So maybe he's a little tired. Uh -huh. Trying to just make me not get the ball. But mm -hmm. obviously he he let up a little bit. And I just needed enough space just to touch the ball. Yeah. And then the rest is just all right, cool. And then here you just what do you feel when you have Yabusele in ISO situation? One it's not. It's, to be honest with you, it's not the defender in front of me. It's never the, the defender in front of me, mm. unless you're like a Tavares. He's yeah, the exactly. only person that makes me. Exactly. You have to kind of think more with him. Uh -huh. But for me, as a as the the type of score I am, it's not about the player in front of me. It's more so me just getting to what I want to get to, depending on the defender, obviously. But for me, it's like if you're gonna be close up on me uh, then I understand like oh you close up I'm gonna that's how you get set up for the pull up when you're too close mm. cause now it's you know tween tween I'm gonna be able to get past you and then you were so close anyway yeah you're probably gonna foul me or I'm gonna have a pull up where you're gonna continue to keep running to the basket yeah but here in this situation obviously it's space between us and I know I'm shooting a three I know mm -hmm. I'm not going cause anywhere I go past the plan it's probably gonna be help yeah and for me it's just get to my spot and that's it. That's really all I was thinking here is even when I seen the switch, I made sure no one was going to come for the help. Uh -huh. And if someone was going to come for the help, I would have shot it earlier because uh -huh. I was shooting uh -huh. it regardless. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's the one thing that I knew for sure. Like with the game on the line, I'm shooting it regardless. Yeah. I don't care who's running at me. I'm shooting it. So that was kind of like my mindset. What do you think about this slip? What were you saying in that moment? Oh, what did I say? Play. Stop playing with me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Stop playing. It looked. It completely looked like this Dame uh, stare at the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah, you remember? Yeah. After I was. The, I do, but I don't, man. I was so locked in. Uh -huh. Like, listen, like I was so. Like, I want this game so bad, so I was so locked in. So a lot of times, it's hard for me to even show emotion, just because mm -hmm. I be so focused and just trying to get this done. You know, so that's kind of like how I felt. And then when it went in, and it was zero point four. I had so many emotions uh, going through my body. Just like, I, I can't show none. It's, it's, it's a weird kind of feeling that I be getting to where it's just like most people will yell, scream, or yeah. I can't I can't do it, though. Even if I try to, it's just not my, it's not my demeanor. It's not my personality. So, uh, and Actually, I had a question from Augustus. Uh, when um, Dame Lillard hit that long-range three-pointer over Paul George. Yes, yes. Lillard, long range three, and it's good! I remember that Paul George told that it was a bad shot. Yeah. But Dame responded that it was a bad defense, actually. Yeah. Because he didn't try to force him drive. Yeah. He knew that he's going to take that long shot, yeah. and even though the range is, is you know, is, and, is huge. And, and, and that's tricky, too, because a lot of players in which we say, like, all oh, right, it's a bad shot, but for who, though? 
mm, if you have a exactly. player that works on this shot over and over and has made it over the years how is this a bad shot mm. you know so even a lot it, of shots it's, it's, it's your shot it's not a bad shot exactly it's maybe just, it's a bad shot for the other player especially if it's at a high percentage too it's like mm. that's, that, that's a good shot was it good defense though was it bad defense did it make your you know move complicate no nah, i really didn't like or there's not good, so, no such thing you know so, like to be honest with you, i don't see the defender mm. like once especially if i get the dancing mm. once i start dancing and dancing i don't see the defender no more so it's like not saying that in a cocky way but it's yeah. like i've done this for years and years and years this is how i train summer after summer after summer so for me is is getting to my spots if you allow me to get to my spot I don't see you anymore just because I get to my spot and I'm raising up and my work is done once I, I do all my work to get to my spot once I get to my spot the work is done already mm. so at that point it's just now if you're making it difficult for me to get to my spot then that's totally different yeah but once I get to my spot it doesn't it doesn't really and let me be clear too my spot doesn't necessarily means this specific area but within the space you have You have your landing room. You have your spots on the court where you have to beat your defender to a certain area and raise up. So that can mm. be. So this happened to be my spot just because I was guarding me and me mm. dancing, and I just got to a spot that I felt comfortable with doing everything, and I pulled up. So that's mm. what I mean by you know just getting to your spot. By the way, there was the following clip from good old. So that's the yeah. times. This is similar to. This is similar to. Yeah, and we discussed it with Augustus, and he thought that Charles Gahudi did a really good job trying to stop you for making your move. Did you see any difference, or again for you, it didn't same, make any so impact? Same thing. Like if you go back, so those two videos is is extremely similar because those defenders, uh, you know, solid defense. Yeah, you can say, but I'm dancing. In the, in our eyes, it's probably solid yeah, defense, but, but in your eyes, I'm, it's just so, another dance so floor, right? Look at his feet. Look how he's moving on and biting on almost everything. Uh huh. This is what I see. Yeah. I have you at my mercy at this point. You know, like this is what I see right now. Damn. And even with, if you go back to Yabu Seli, like uh -huh. if you if you watch his feet, you watch how he's moving. This is this is what I want. It may not be moving as much, but if you're moving yeah. and biting on a little bit, yeah, I like, see, I see. You know, like if you're moving enough for me. It's done. It's done. You know, okay. like that's all I. That's, Simple as that. Well, that's all I need. It's not rocket for me. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Like I've been studying this for year after year after years. So that's just what I. I don't look at it, but I just see mm -hmm. how your body's just moving and just move. You kind of going with me. Kind of going with the flow. How were you studying it? Who did you watch the most? Uh, I watched a lot of KD. I watched a lot of Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. uh, as I got a little bit older, not too too much older, but I watched a lot of Lou Will too. So, uh, so a mixture, just with Kobe, his mid range and okay. his fades and things like that. Uh, Kevin Durant, just him, you know, being skinny, things of that nature. And then Lou Will, just you know, kind of same body size. Yeah, he's able to get a lot of these tough shots off without you know doing too too much. You know. And long story short, we spoke about it before on the podcast, but who did who who made a, the biggest influence in you developing the pull up jumper? My dad, my dad, hundred percent. Obviously, you watch, you know, you watch, uh, watch other players growing up and stuff. Like I said, Kobe and things like that. I grew up on Kobe. My dad, my dad was the first person to ever tell me like, the pull-up jump shot is the hardest thing to guard because you are going at 100 miles per hour and you're stopping. How could any defender stop that? It's hard to stop, you know. So like, just imagine you going 100 miles per hour. You're playing defense and someone just stops right there. Yeah. You're dead in the water, and those, and that's the hardest shot to shoot because most people aren't going to be balanced. And most people, you know, is, they're not really looking to shoot or pull up anyway like that, you know? So I think that's why I say this. It's a lost arc. Obviously, my dad grew up, you know, watching mm. 80s and 90s. You know, is he, he coaching? I mean, nah, he that, that's a brilliant advice, you know? No, nah, he, he doesn't coach at all. Uh, he just, no, nah, he don't coach at all. My dad was a construction worker, but he grew up playing basketball, you know, in, in the parks and just, my dad got a lot of wisdom, you know? So, Obviously, he didn't study the game, watch the game for year after year after years, just for years. So, you know, he was just he was just giving me a gem that I keep with me for the rest of my life. So, it's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Before we go to this part, it's mm -hmm. probably from the last game against Vezda. Yeah. 
I actually try to ask few players what do they think about your pull-up and what it makes it so hard to stop. And I just got response from, from Mike James. He said, KP shot is difficult because of the height of on his shot and his release point. He got long arms and he has the ability to shoot over the top of balance and even leaning forward. Even if you try to push him to the basket, he gets to a spot and raises up. It's difficult mm -hmm. to stop with him and get a proper hand. And like he said, I get, some, I get to my spot. Mm -hmm. That's really big with me. In, in basketball, it should be like that's that's how you be. Even if you watch Kevin Durant, like mm -hmm. I watch a lot of his film, a lot of his tape. He's so good in the mid range area, and if you watch the similarities, he gets to his spot. Like he gets, he'll jab yeah. you, drag you to sleep, one or two dribbles, raises up. That's exactly what he does. So I guess I watched him a lot when I, when he was in um he was in Texas, and we played for the same coach, Rick Barnes. Hmm. So I really really studied the put, and I already had the mid range already with me so i was just watching how he was doing it just you know taking little tricks and stuff like that and just trying to just add it to my game and just going to the end we have some clips from the last game would you name like top three top five defenders that you faced in your career um that i faced in my you know you know you know it was a really really i think i've i don't know if i've said this Bubois has given me he's so annoying okay <laughs> I got a lot of respect for Bubois. Like over the years, like just me being a rookie in the Euro League, and then he's blocked my shot almost every game. Okay. From the time I've started playing Euro League to now. I didn't expect you to bring that. Name. Yes, because it, but it is, and it's not because he's physical. Is mm. his timing mm. is he has amazing timing. I don't know if it's just on my shot or what, mm. but <laughs> his timing is like. It's, 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 it's yeah. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Maybe he's just and built for... And he has for... really long arms, too. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if you know, but his, he has really, really long arms. So I didn't play against him, so I'm not yeah, sure. But you know. yeah, he but... has really long arms, so a lot of times I'll get past him. Mm. Or say I'll... Even last year when we played him, I got past him one time and I went in for a floater and he came right behind me and blocked it. Okay. And I'm not really used to that, you uh -huh. know, because once I get past him and raise up a little bit or get into my, get into my shot, I'm good. But no, he's mm. he he he's he's blocking it. So he was, he he's probably the he's probably one guy I say just because I think like yeah, I think he has a really, really good time on the show. Okay, we have one last situation to break down. <laughs> this is after Monaco, huh? Could be. It, it was happening after every game basically. Yeah. <laughs> How do you try to read that situation? Being surrounded by like hundreds of people trying to sing something? Yeah, that's that's dope, man. It's it's cool. It's it's cool. It's it's cool. Cause early in the season wasn't like this. It wasn't like this early in the year. And as time How did went it on, start? I'm not too sure. To be mm. honest with you, I can't remember. Yeah. Because we started, I think what, 0 and 3. Yeah. It was we, tough start. We beat Virtus. I think for our first win. Mm. We didn't do this. Yeah. Uh I wanna say maybe Ephes. Maybe we beat Ephes at home, mm. maybe. I, I can't. I can't remember though. What you, what you doing here? Now you're standing and waving yeah, something, to, and you're got, to, you're getting some tips from this start, big guy. I'm about to start chanting. <laughs> <laughs> but Tia's got me. But Tia's got me going. I'm hyping everybody up. Got like a big win. I don't have the. I don't think I have the mic neither. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just screaming at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Did you know screaming. what you were screaming, or it was just like partisan? Yeah, so partisan one of the partisan stuff. songs starts like partisan, and then mm. the crowd continues. Okay. And so that was just starting it up, and then yeah. everyone just goes crazy. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's pretty. Good. I think yeah, this was at the Monaco for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was at the Monaco definitely, because that was a big one for us. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, KP, thanks for the film Appreciate session, you, bro. No problem.